What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Brandon's Face. It's the podcast about a playlist. I'm Jonathan Beardsley. And I am Brandon May. It's been a busy week in the music world. We are fresh on the heels of EDC weekend in Las Vegas. Fred again ended up being the big special guest for Saturday night. He is kind of playing all over the U.S. slash Mexico slash the world right now. Um, this was not an advertised appearance. I think he only has one advertised U.S. festival appearance this year. But he does seem to be the artist to see in EDM right now, right? Uh, I mean, yeah, man, he's kind of been like that since he sold out the shrine a thousand times this year. Again, 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 again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the dude's not stopping anytime soon. Uh, but some of the acts that were announced also made some headlines. I think the biggest of which is Zed, who announced his first new album in nine years. Telos is the name of it. It's going to be released. Uh, let me see here. August 30th. What are your thoughts on this? My thoughts are that I would really love a new Zed electro album. I have always been a fan of Zed. Um, I've seen him a handful of times and he has always put on a fantastic show. Um, we'll see, man. First one in nine years. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I, I would love some electro as well. I have a feeling it's going to be more electro pop than anything, but I think we're at least going to get a few bangers. Yep. Uh, Alice in Wonderland played a surprise techno set at the Rhino Bus Art Car. <laughs> um, things I wish I had been there for. That sounds fucking incredible. What What's your take on like art car performances? It's not abnormal for a big artist to pop up on one of these every year. Like, do you think they're worth kind of hanging around an art car during a main festival in the hopes that something like that happens? Uh, no, I don't think that the, I don't think that it's worth it just kind of hanging around, just hoping for that to happen. I think I've been, I've been to a couple of insomniac events where the art car was there. The art car is cool. Um, but it, if, yeah. in, in my opinion, if, if I'm there, I'm really just there to check everything out, you know, and yeah, see sure. some underground and see if there's, uh, see if there's, uh, anything fun that I'm missing out on. And if I get an Alice in Wonderland set, then fuck yeah, let's go. For sure. I feel the exact same way. She was playing last year, like nine months pregnant. You you cannot keep that girl from playing some bangers at EDC every year. Um, <laughs> we got any other headlines coming out of EDC? That's kind of all I have from that. Uh, no, I don't think there's any, ma any, any other major headlines. Uh, oh, uh, Dead Mouse did play that Grimes clip from Coachella um, oh, into yes. a drop at his, at his set. <laughs> That was next level Classic trolling. Dead mouse. Yeah, next level trolling, as we've come to know, expect, and love from our mouse master. But uh, other than that, no, man, I think uh, I think it was a a classic EDC, if you will. And some more uh, morbid news. I, I saw some conspiracy theory circles around Twitter saying that they're trying to hide a dead body from the like reported figures of the festival. So oh. we'll see if that handful of kids on Twitter turns out to be right, or if. It's a successful cover up. Only time will tell. You got to uh, give it to the hand, the handful of kids on Twitter because uh, they're right about half the time. But they, they sadly are. <laughs> um, we got tons of new album announcements this week. Like, holy shit, man. Vince Staples not only announced a new album, he just dropped it like an hour before recording this. New Bring Me the Horizon just announced today that they are dropping their new album tonight. I think we're we will have already heard a good chunk of the songs on there by the time it drops, but it's Ten finally songs being released. That we haven't heard. Yes. Ten oh yeah. Yeah. Songs. There's going to be at least a, a bunch of new songs, but I'm looking forward to that new K Trinata announced that's going to be coming out June 7th His uh, his long awaited ID with childish Gambino is going to be on that project. We got a new Ravina album dropping June 14th, new Kalani June 21st, new Claro July 12th, new albums from a few artists we're going to be talking about soon, including Lupe Fiasco, Omar Apollo, The Used, and Empire of the Sun have been announced as well and are all dropping oh. relatively soon. Uh, we are back, man. We are back. <laughs> yeah, it is 2024 and 2024 <laughs> is in full swing. Uh, yeah, man, I'm excited to cover all of those with you. Um, any thoughts sticking out to you based on that or just excitement? 
I'm excited for the majority of them. Uh, the used album is not going to be a regular used album. It's going to be a B sides. Um, I had which a feeling is less yeah. exciting than I would have preferred. I'm glad that we're getting a full bring me the horizon album. Uh, Vince Staples, you About and time. I both loved his last couple of projects. So I'm not going to be surprised if we love this one, both, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm overall very, very excited. Same. Uh, let's get right into this week's episode, man. We're going to kick things off with this new one from John Summit and Sub Focus with Julia Church on vocals called Go Back. It's a classic uh, house drum and bass hybrid banger. I'm a big fan of it. What about you? This is a great track. Don't get me wrong. I really liked it. The problem I have but... with John Summit <laughs> is that he just jumps from trend to trend, bro. Tech House out, D- drum and bass in. Better do a collab with Sub Focus. Let's see what. Uh, let's see if I can make some D and B. You know, it's just it's so silly, man. You Tra- say track is good. <laughs> you say jump trends. I say music is genreless, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, let's we're talk about fight this tonight. Let's talk about this new one from Shimza, an artist I've actually never heard. I threw it on because it's featuring vocals of Rachel Shinriri, whose album we just covered in both liked a few weeks ago. Although it was nothing like this kind of subtle house track that she's on here. What did you think of this one? The track's called Parachute. Uh, this is atmospheric. It really yeah. took me by surprise. The melodies, the bass line, Rachel's voice, it all works so well. Do you think she'll work more in this space or do you think this is kind of a one and done? I kind of hope so. Cause it really worked. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that I, I don't think she's going to be good on like a rehab track, but I do think there's a few electronic artists that could really like play to her strings. This was interesting. Wasn't expecting it. Really liked it. Yeah, man. I think, uh, I think like a collab with LPGOB would be, uh, would be really neat. Fire. Um, Got a new one from Peggy Gao called Lobster Telephone off of her upcoming album due out June 7th. I think she played this one during the Coachella set. Either that or I'm just doing one of those like memory hole things where I'm remembering the lobster claws from visuals elsewhere. Am I wrong? Do you remember her playing this? Uh, I don't specifically remember her playing this, but I got it. I just have to say it, man. This artwork is the stuff of nightmares, John. Get into body horror, Brandon. It's fun. Um, I am sorry, by the way, for adding the edit, not the full mix. I did not realize that when I added How it. How dare you? No, I know. Tra- the track is us. fine, man. The track is fine. I swear this melody is something that I've heard before. I, I don't think it was a Peggy Gow track, though. I, I I think you're right. Uh, but like that's kind of the thing with her music. That thing, that song of hers that was really big last year, it goes like kind of use that same ATB interpolation of, uh, uh, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Like, so I feel like there is like a level of sampling in her music and I hate to like, uh, gender any genre of music, but dude, the girls in EDM are fucking killing it right now. Alice in Wonderland, Jada G, Nia Archives, Peggy Gow, LPG Obi, who you just mentioned, Rez. There is some fucking heaters right now, man. I'm loving all of the shit that they've been putting out these past few years. Even in the techno world, bro. Helena Hoff, Amelie yes, Lenz, Charlotte yeah. DeWitt. Uh, Nicole Modaber. Luca, Nicole Modaber. No, fucking, I mean, there's more, bro. Like, there's, Dude, yeah. there's, it's, it's, uh, go, go, go girls, man. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Let's keep going. <laughs> All right, we got this. Uh, it's the Last Night by Luffy. It's the Anima and Leighton Giordani remix. Man, there's only like, what, 15 words in this song, but it doesn't need any more. It's perfect just the way it is, right? Yeah, uh, it's a good track, as is tradition for Anima. I couldn't, I couldn't for the life of me, find any Giordani influence, but it's probably buried in there somewhere. Yeah, I... I mean, I think if it was an original, we'd probably hear more of the Giordani, but I think with it being a remix, and I think with probably Anima locking in on what the remix structure and overall sound was going to be is probably why it leans a little more in that direction. There, I'd love to hear like an actual collab from both of these guys, though. It hits, man. Every time I, this one came on in the car, I I turned it up. <laughs> um Yep, surprisingly the same thing with this next one from Tiesto and Prophecy, My City. It's it's cheesy DM, but man, it's got a fun baseline to it. What'd you think? I knew without even looking at my phone the first time this came on that this was Tiesto. Oh, of course. Good yeah. for him, man. Good track. 
Yeah, we got a new one from Jejo Tronic and Anna Land called Consequences. This is the club mix, of course. What did you think of this six minutes of Jejo Tronic music? Excellent. As we have come to expect from Jejo, there is a, just like a, there's a different edit of this track, but the club edit was just too good to not to not listen to. Yeah, dude, I I agree. I love this edit. I didn't. I assumed there was another version of it. I didn't need to hear it. This one's perfect. Yep, this is the one. All right, we got another new one from Shy Girl this year. I love the run she's been on. This is her new track, Encore, produced by Daniel Harrell, who has worked with, I mean, a lot of people like Charlie XCX and so on. Um, this one also has, it's just under the tag of Club Shy, and you can tell why the second you listen to it, man. It's bassy, it's fucking energetic. It's a little bit heavier than her last EP that she just put out. Uh, I, I fucking love this track, man. What about you? Uh, yeah, this track goes real hard, John. Yeah, uh, very. We got a new one from Sawidi called Nani. It's it's catchy. It's fun. It's a little derivative of, I don't know, the last three summers of like this pop rap R&B type of sound. But I don't hate it. What about you? What do you mean, man? You're not sick of this? Uh, <laughs> this the Dr. Is, Luke sound. This is so fucking catchy. It's almost annoying. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that that could be a lot of it, too. Um, she's coming off a big year. She had that big McDonald's meal deal and all of that. So good for Saweetie. I haven't seen anything about a new album, though. Wouldn't be surprised, though. I had not heard about this McDonald's meal. Yeah, I mean, last year they did, like, what, like eight of them? They did, like, a BTS one. They did that, like, Megan the Stallion hottie sauce one. They're mostly, they're not really, like, new items as much as, like, They'll put together a meal of like, like the Travis Scott thing. He orders a Big Mac with lettuce. And like, so God. that's what the meal, the Travis Scott meal is. There's rarely like an item on the menu that hasn't been there before. But yeah, she, she is kind of known on social media for these horrendous late night fucking concoctions where she'll just put like a McChicken patty in between a double cheeseburger and like dip it in barbecue sauce and just fucking go to town with no shame. Like this is, this is clearly what she likes to do and I respect her for it. It right. led to a fucking deal with McDonald's. So who am hey, I to criticize? Good for her. Yeah. Um, all right, man, let's move on to the rap realm of things very briefly. It's that new one from Lupe Fiasco called Samurai. I believe this is the title track off of his, his upcoming album. What did you think of this one? Uh, Lupe does it again, man. Good shit from yeah. Mr. Fiasco as uh, expected. Uh, I My question was, do we have an album on the way? You have confirmed that. Um, and uh, yeah, man, excited for that one. Yeah, that one is going to be dropping June 28th. I'm very excited for it as well. He he killed yeah. this track, dude. Really good shit. Um, all right, we got this new one from Anderson Pack and uh Knowledge, aka No Worries, featuring Snoop Dogg, kind of, and featuring October London, whose vocals on this track are heavenly. The hook on this motherfucker is just intoxicating. I I don't really love the like one minute of kind of wasted Snoop Dogg talk at the end of it, if I'm being honest, but the track itself, when it is in the meat of it is really good. what do you think about this one? Get into the meat of this track peoples, because what John just said is real. Um, I'm really loving this collab. Uh, no worries is uh pretty neat so far. I actually, I, so not only do I not like the Snoop Dogg, uh, spoken word, but I actually kind of wish that he rapped over it because him rapping over this production would have yeah. been really cool. I honestly didn't even think about that, but you are right. That would have enhanced it a little bit. Um, yeah, that album, No Worries, is dropping alongside K Tronado, Charlie XCX, and Peggy Gao on June 7th. That Yikes. is going to be an insane day. I will be seeing you that weekend, by the way. Hell yeah. Um, all right, <laughs> moving on. We got a new one from Russ and Black called working on me this one is kind of like a little more alternative r&b for russ which isn't surprising given the black feature it almost gave me some alan raymond vibes more than anything though what'd you think about it so 
This is actually kind of a beautiful track, man. I think that this duo works really way, really well in ways that I that I didn't expect before I hit play. I hit before I hit play. I was like Russ, and so Russ is going to rap. Black's going to do you know six lakhs going to do the chorus, but that's not what sure. we got at all. This is really good stuff, and I think like most things, Russ excels at this. Like he actually excels at this style of music. I would love to hear more. Yeah, yeah, he he's a guy that's very easy to hate, but it's you can't really deny the guy's talent when he has a hit, you know? Oh, most definitely. Um, we got this new one from Omar Apollo called Dispose of Me. It's off of his upcoming album God Said No, which is coming out the same day as that Lupe Fiasco one, June 28th. This one's a little more slow and drawn out than Spite was, but Still has his signature tender vocals at the center of it, maybe more so than usual. Uh, I don't know if this is the full direction the album's going to go into, but man, dude is peaking vocally right now. What do you think of this? You know, I've been really loving the amount of guitar we've been hearing in R&B lately. Uh, and with a voice mm-hmm. like Omar's over this, it could not have worked any better. Yeah, he kills it. He did a little live performance uh, on YouTube to go along with the release of this. And it's really cool seeing him like use that uh, the mic that kind of does the type sound stuff too, yeah. like switching between both of them. It's really good, man. I like it. Cool, bro. Right. Got this new one from London Grammar kind of man. What do you think about it? This band continues to surprise me, John. The vocals on this are fantastic. Not like just the sound of her voice, but the entire cadence and over top of these instrumentals is like really great. Yeah, uh, I really liked that last track that they added. Um, This one is great. I just love her voice. The only thing that bums me out is that album is not dropping until like mid-September. So we still have a long way to go on the the silver lining side of things. They typically get top level EDM producers to remix these songs in the meantime, kind of like that Solomon remix we got of their last track. So I'm hoping for more of that in the meantime, but I really like where this rollout's going. Yeah. Super same, man. All right, man. New one from empire of the sun music on the radio is out. Their new album (laughs) is going to be dropping the same day as Porter Robinson's July 26. It is the early 2010s again. (laughs) what did you think about this one, man? Yeah, this is, uh, uh, this is not very good. Like, I guess it's fine or whatever. I just, I think that a band who has seen such massive commercial success, specifically on the radio, singing about they hate how they how much they hate the radio and how they don't play their song on the radio, just seems a little off. I'm pretty sure I hear an Empire of the Sun song every single time I walk into a Walgreens. I wouldn't be fucking surprised if you did, especially out there near Coachella. Um, yeah, dude, I'm not a fan of this one. I. I'm sure we'll check out the album when it drops. It's not for a while, but this is not a good start in my opinion. Yeah. Um, all right. This new one from the Beverly kills him to you. I was digging this one though. Uh, it was giving me some, just, I don't know, just some good indie vibes this week. We didn't have a lot of this specific sound on the playlist this week. So I was enjoying this one. What about you? Right, man. I, I really love this band. They just do something to me. This is really good stuff. Uh, like you said, it's just like good, like good vibes on this one. Yeah. Yeah. It, I hate to say that as a critic, I should have more vocabulary than that, but good vibes, good vibes on this one. Best um, critic got, alive. Thank you. He's the fastest kid alive. All right. We got this new one from look to windward river mercury Two. You really liked the last track of theirs. We covered. What'd you think of this one? Uh, another one from look to windward. I know the last track really wasn't your thing, but I, I, I really like this one and I kind of hope you do too. The riffs and the drumming are excellent in my opinion. This one was much more my thing, or at least I wasn't more in the mood for it this week. I enjoyed it too. I imagine at this point we are on the way to an album rollout. Uh, yes, I believe it is a combination audio visual album. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. We got to, uh, start thinking of a way to review these visual albums too, at least the visual components of them. Yeah, we'll figure um, it out. all right. New single from black budget called behave. I really like just the, I don't know, just the sound of the guitars in this one. were really comforting this week. Yep. They're not quite fuzzy, but just like loud, energetic. I loved how riffy just their overall energy was. what do you think about this one? 
Yeah, so this is out on King Pizza Records. This band is calling themselves oh, yeah. <laughs> just this band calls themselves a desert band while being from Toronto, Canada. While me listening to them in the desert, well, I don't know, it's something. I do love the music, man. It's super riffy, like you said. The guitar po- the the guitar tone is fantastic. Um, I really like this one. Same man. All right, let's wrap things up on the singles this week with this new one from The Use. It's the self-titled off that album of B-sides they have coming out. It's called Meds. You are the foremost used authority on the podcast, Brandon. I will defer to you on this. What do you think about it? You know, man, I haven't really gone back and listened to Toxic Posit- Positivity, uh, but this track seems like something that may have been written like a little bit before those sessions, but not recorded until those sessions. Um, sure. I like this one, yeah. but I, I just miss Bert screaming, you know, he, he sounds okay here, but give me, give me some passion, bud. Yeah, man. I, uh, I'm with you there. I, I didn't think this track was bad, but I too missed the scrams with you. Yep. All right. We got a few EPs this week to talk about this new one from bad, bad, not good. Mid spiral chaos is just beautiful man i know you were jamming to this one all week oh fuck yeah i was as is tradition for bad bad not good this entire ep is just excellent um Mm -hmm. i read the name of the ep and thought you know i can see them doing some chaos i didn't really (laughs) get quite as chaotic as i know as i wanted them to be but there's plenty of wild stuff here if you listen for the subtleties which i know that which you know that i did uh, yep. The little drum fills, some bass lines that just kind of go for it. not a walk, but a jog, you know, and the mm-hmm. little flourishes of bluesy riffs. It's all fantastic, man. Thank you. Bad, bad, not good for another solid release. I cannot wait for more as usual. I actually have to, th- I actually have to shout out uh, mid spiral is probably uh, not, not probably it's my, it's my song of the week. It, it was, it was on, it was on repeat this week. So that song is so good, dude. Uh, yeah, dude. Consistency is key with them, and this is just another insanely good release. Weird and Wonderful was my standout of the bunch, but you can't go wrong on here. Like you said, maybe not as chaotic as you would have thought for the uh, the album title, but just as satisfying all the same. Right, right, right. All right, man. One more EP to talk about. It's our obligatory techno EP of the week. It's by Truncate this week. It's called the Remember EP. We got two versions of the song Remember alongside his track That Chord Again. What do you think of these? We have a our weekly techno EP, like you said. Uh, this time coming from the Los Angeles techno powerhouse Truncate. This one is self-released, and I think he genuinely flourishes when he's working for himself and not for a label. Uh, that chord again is just fucking great. What even is this bass line on that one? What I have so many like what even is going on on this a lot of <laughs> these tracks. Like he does so much weird shit, but it's all working, man. I don't know how he does his sound design on like his leads, but man, it's it's very different, but it it hits and it works. I really liked it. Yeah, most definitely, man. I really like this one. All right. Are you ready to move on to the albums? I am, sir. Are you? I am. Let's start off with this new one from Billie Eilish, Hit Me Hard and Soft. I like this one, man. It's not my favorite album of hers, but I think it's good. It's more concise than Happier Than Ever Was, uh, while still managing, I think, to hit some of those same highs. The first three song stretch, I think, is the best on it. Easily my favorite. Skinny is an incredible album opener. Lunch is an instant hit. And probably my song of the week. You know, fuck it. It is my song of the week. I love all the synth pop stuff on Chihiro. I think what Birds of a Feather lacks in depth, like lyrical depth that kind of makes up for in like the tone and execution. It's also followed up by Wildflower, which I think is probably the heaviest from a lyrical perspective. So the album kind of evens out as it goes a lot like that. It's a bit up and down for me, but I enjoy it a lot more than I don't. Um, I'm, I want to say I'm feeling a strong seven on this one. I could see it creeping down to a six over time, but I really do like it, man. My standout is lunch. Uh, she did just release a new version of L'Amour de Ma Vie, though, this week that fucking slaps. I wish that was kind of on here. That'd be my standout. But what did you think of this new effort from Billie Eilish, man? From my understanding, she released two new uh, versions of the entire album, which are the slowed and oh, reverbed and then faster, sped up. 
All right. Well, th- there's like a dance version specifically of one of the songs that isn't like a slow one or sped up. But I that that's a whole other trend in itself right now. But yes, hit me with your thoughts, man. The Lana Del Rey influence on pop music needs to fucking stop already. I am sick of artists singing in this exasperated, breathy voice with neck scrapes behind it. Man, I've heard it a thousand fucking times. Okay, rant over. This album is fine. Billy has never really been my favorite, but I like a handful of her tracks over her career. I'll never really understand the hype for her to like headline Coachella and shit, but I digress. This album is produced excellently. Uh, her brother Phineas did a legit amazing job with the instruments and the just the production. It's actually mixed near perfectly. All of the spurts, all of the strings, all of the percussion, the bass lines, it's all done extremely well. Billie Eilish kind of ruins it for me, though, which is kind of a bummer. I I like this album a lot more than I like her last one, which was a nice surprise for me. There are moments on this record that I really don't like, though, specifically the breathy vocals along with like downtrodden production. I think it's low hanging fruit and is designed to like invoke like an emotional response or something. But Billie has has like done this on other records. And plenty of other artists have been able to do it without sounding like everyone else sounds at the moment. To her credit, she does it well, even if I don't like it. But tracks like Skinny and Greatest are fantastic examples of what I don't really like. All of that being said, though, John, there are some moments on this one that I do really enjoy. I think she does a really I think she does really well on tracks like Bird of a Feather or Birds of a Feather and my standout of the album, which is L'Amour de Ma Vie, which I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of, but whatever. Same. Um, Same. I just I just want Billy to come out with something that's her and not guided by the prevailing pop sounds of the year. Uh, I think when we all when we all fall asleep uh, is very much like a very creative flourish for her and really spoke to people. And I don't think that she's spoken to people with her instrumentals and music for a while. The lyrics on this one very much will uh, speak to people on, on, on this album. However, the sound of it is just it's just not for me, man, at least on like at least half of it. Uh, maybe, right. maybe not at least half of it, but maybe half of it. I've uh, I've heard Billy Eilish breathe more than I care to. Uh, it's somewhere between a five and a six for me. My standout is La Mode de Ma Vie. At least the breath cut. Um, yeah, dude, I I don't think you're <laughs> off at all. I I think you I think the truth is probably somewhere in between us. I you are right, and I I don't I didn't really think about the Lana Del Rey ness of it all, but I think that as the place she came from creatively on her first few projects, which granted she's like 16, 17 years old on those. She's going to change a lot. She's only 22 right now. Like this is far from a finished product, but yeah, like I think the ringer just did an article saying like, despite the, the dyed hair and streetwear, like her, her whole brand right now is, is pretty traditional for a pop star. It, we were led to yeah. believe it was going to be this very avant-garde thing all the way through. But the more it settles in, the more she is just a normal person like most people and has more normal things to sing about than like the creative shit in her head when she was 16. I think some of that's for better, some of it's for worse. I think the fun is still on this album, if maybe a little bit less. I think her voice is getting better with every release, though. But that's I fair. will agree, that, the, agree the breathiness you. is... Uh, is is a choice, man. Uh, we'll see if it continues. It's a good album. I think we can both give it one thumbs up easily. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's move on to this new one from Cage the Elephant, Neon Pill. Did this one live up to your personal expectations for it? All right, man. So it, I've I've made no secret about how much I like Cage the Elephant's music. I've seen them live a couple of times, both of which they commanded every inch of the stage. I own their entire discography on vinyl, and my wife and I listen to them quite often. So clearly, Uh I'm unable to be biased about this album review, right? Um, (laughs) Their their last few albums haven't really been viewed very well by fans, so I was very curious about how this one would be received after listening to it for a few times, and I gotta say, there's not a lot of people talking about it. Which feels weird for me as this album is pretty much a return to form for them, a la Melophobia or Thank You Happy Birthday. This band does a lot of things right. 
uh, and they and these things happen in spades on this album. They have uh, fantastic melodic comp- they, they have fantastic melodic compositions. They have killer bass lines, unique vocals from Matt and a group of people that really know how to incorporate pop elements into rock without taking the rock out of the room. Uh, this album was produced by John Hill, who has a very impressive production credits. Uh, such as Jay-Z, Rihanna, Charlie XCX, Portugal, The Man, Santa Gold, etc., Vince Staples, you know. So it's no wonder why this album mm-hmm. sounds so good. Um, I did have the chance to listen to this on the on vinyl, and it sounds incredible. So whoever mastered this one for vinyl, thank you. Um, their mixture of just rock music with vulnerable lyrics about love, loss, addiction, and mistakes made... Uh, it's just something that I've always really loved about cage and it's here so much tracks like the lead single neon pill, the atmospheric and piano, the piano laden track float into the sky, the absolutely beautiful track out loud, which covers Matt's personal life in New York. Um, and it's actually solidified as this is one of the only songs on the album where Matt is one of the only writers on the, on the track. Uh, this, uh, out loud song is just gorgeous, man. Uh, speaking of this track, though, it's sequenced into the album pretty perfectly as it invokes these emotions, but it's, stand- it's sandwiched in between what feels like class two classic Cage tracks to bring you right back into the energy. Um, I really enjoyed this album, man. I hope they tour so I can see them again as they're one of those bands that just electrify you on stage. It's an eight for me out loud is my standout, which is funny because it's the slowest song on the album, and that's normally not my thing. Yeah, I wouldn't expect that to be your standout of these. You've always liked them more than me. I think that remains true here. I really only liked one of the four singles that we talked about for this one. So my personal hopes or expectations weren't super high for it. It's not as bad as I thought it'd be, honestly, but it's it's not one I don't it's not one I think I will be coming back to after this week either, if I'm being honest. They do manage to put together a few very nice indie rock tracks on here that feel like classic cage, like you said, but it feels like to me, at least the spark of their old music isn't really present in the way that it used to be, or at least it doesn't feel like it. There are moments on here that scratch the itch, but kind of only temporarily for me, that's coming from a casual fan of theirs at best. So keep that in mind. But I think the back half of this album has a little more punch for me than the front half that run of, uh, what ball and chain through shy eyes, I think is really, really fun, but that's the longest stretch of the album. That feels like it's really clicking for me. I have this one in like the five to six range. My standout is ball and chain really liked that one. It's a good song. All right, man. Are you ready to talk about this new one from your ghosting glass? <laughs> are you? Yes, man. Uh, this, this album is called Drowning to Escape the Fire, and it hits all of the mid-2000s MySpace core vibes I was hoping it would and more. Touches on pop punk, post-hardcore, metalcore, and more to just create an album that feels like a tour through time as much as it feels like something that exists today. That recent CU Space Cowboy album hit on, hit on a lot of the same notes for me. It's it's just so cool that this specific style of scene music is still being made in a post MySpace world. I'm very appreciative of it, and I hope more fans of this type of music check this out. In terms of standouts, I think Pistol in a Pulpit is my favorite, but of the newer tracks we got, Dreaming in Black and White and Blindfolds and Exit Signs are both outstanding. It's all great, though, man. Easy eight for me. I loved this whole album. What about you? That's amazing, man. Uh, yeah, so I am so I was just so excited that we got a full album uh, from Sorry. Ghost and Glass. Uh, the first time I heard this music, I was just kind of blown away how perfectly encapsulated the sound of that post hardcore and emo did so well. And, you know, 2000 to 2009, just like you said, man. But like, it's not just like the cleans versus screams or like the breakdowns or but the mixing on this one mm-hmm. is perfect for the nostalgic sound um i i there's there's just moments on this that remind me of some of my favorite bands from the scene there's like this intro that sounds like car underwater by armor for sleep and then it like breaks down into like a chiotos riff like there, there there's so many little moments on this album that like feel like a callback to something that this band wasn't involved in but still somehow seems original To me, that's wild. Um, It's this is a fantastic record, man. I love this album. I will be returning to it for the rest of the year for sure. 
Pistol in a Pulpit is probably the best song on the album. Like you said, it's an eight for me as well. Great, great album. Really, really liked this one, man. Glad you did it as well. Good find. Um, all right, man. We got this new album from Joy Wave called Permanent Pleasure. What do you think about this one? I mainly threw this album on because of the fact that Joy Wave triggers your PTSD a little bit when <laughs> there's eight million remixes of Every Mirror is a Window, but I genuinely enjoy Joy Wave's music also. This is a light indie pop break from the chaos that normally surrounds my listening habits, and I think that they have a good way of writing about them. There is nothing on this album that jumps out at me as incredible or groundbreaking stuff, but I enjoyed my time with it for sure. Uh, it's a somewhere between a six and a seven, probably more so on the six side, but uh, it's here to perform the final song from their album, Permanent Pleasures. Welcome, Joy Wave is probably my standout. <laughs> Great song title. Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah, dude. I liked this one too. I don't know if Joy Wave is capable of making a bad album. Not always a fan of this type of indie, but they they always do it in a way that I can just fuck with, honestly. I, I do think this album kind of loses a little steam as it goes, but that first half is good enough to offset it. There's some gems in the back half too. The album itself just slows down a bit by comparison. There's nothing on here I enjoy as much as pretty much all of How Do You Feel Now, but songs like Scared and He's Back are great adds to their discography. This is in that like six to seven range for me. My standout is Brain Damage, but more importantly, I think anytime we review a new Joy Way out, Joy Wave album, I forget how fun it is to just like throw their their discography on shuffle on while you do stuff. Right. I've been listening to so much Joy Wave that isn't this album this week, but I feel like these songs are going to just go perfectly in that shuffle, you know? That's great. That's actually a really good pro tip. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, good album. Yes. All right, man. We got some metal to talk about here. So let's talk about this new one from Extortionist called Devoid of Love and Light. Give me your thoughts on it. So uh, we listened to a single last week or a couple of weeks ago from this band, and we were both kind of like taken aback by their sound a little bit uh, for good reason, as the single When It All Goes Dark is real fucking heavy. Uh, this album surprised me a bit, a bit, though, because of how much clean vocal work there is. They all work extremely well, though. Um, this album is out on Unique Leader Records, who have released some absolute crushers over the course of their label. And from what I've heard from them, this album's a little different. I'm used to, like, slamming brutal death metal from them, but this is far more of a genty metalcore record, albeit way heavier than the stuff we hear from, like, Northlane, Currents, and Sleep Token. Mm -hmm. but, uh, this one, it, this is actually kind of one of my favorite parts of the album, though. Um, the parts where it's getting heavy and then it just doesn't let up, man. The breakdowns keep going. The riffs keep going and the band does not sanitize any of this music for the sake of any per commercial prosperity. The cleans aren't like the poppy cleans that we've, that have kind of overtaken metalcore over the last 20 years. Okay. Enough comparisons. I just really love how heavy this album tends to be and how controlled chaos each track tends to lean into as they progress. The fuzz around the riffs, the hardcore beatdown influence, and the clear intent they had when creating this thing is fucking great. I really liked this album, John. It's between a seven and an eight for me. Uh, the title track, uh, Devoid of Love and Light, is an absolute banger. Uh, could not agree with you more, man. What a fucking album. I, I love it when I go in expecting one thing. And getting just so much more in return. We talked about one of their tracks a week or two ago, and it left me thinking the album would be some pretty straightforward metalcore, but they managed to incorporate some beatdown hardcore, like you said, some anthemic metal, surprisingly anthemic vocals on this, and more. And they use all of these different tools to create so many memorable moments on this album. The instant pit energy of Invisible Scars is palpable. Yes. The pure violence of the last breakdown of Out of Touch is beautiful. Everything about Drained of Life. They add so much atmosphere to all of it, too. I love all the little touches on this one. Overall, I thought this one was really good. Strong 7 to a light 8 for me. My standout is Out of Touch. Big fan of this one. Yes, sir. All right, man. Talk to me about this new album from Paul Bear, Mind Burns Alive. 
Okay. Uh, Paul Bearer is not afraid to take their time. Uh, they never really have been, John. This is their first album in four years from the Doom Meddlers out on Nuclear Blast Records. I've been aware of them for a while, but as I basically just started getting into the more doomy stuff over the last couple of years, I had never really dived into their discography for this. So this was kind of a fun listen. Well, I guess fun is a word, but the lyrical content concepts on this album kind of are not. Uh, each of these tracks have a really similar formula. There's some lighter riffs up front, some atmospheric elements like a synth or some long drawn out guitar work into some, at least by like comparison, some, some pretty heavy riffage that, that really does something for me as it, as it builds up to it. Right. Uh, it makes me slow down, man. It makes me contemplate life. It makes me, it almost turns me a little catatonic when I like really get into it, man. I really love when music can almost instantly put me into a different mood. And I honestly had, uh, I had to like really actively listen to this one, this album. And I'm assuming most of their albums are not passive listens. This, uh, this album also comes alive when listened to in like nice headphones. I actually listened also to this one on the way back from San Diego over the mountain because, uh, this week and, and, and it was, it was the almost perfect calm drive through the forest music as well. I really liked it, man. It's, uh, probably a, a Let's call it a seven. Uh, Mind Burns Alive with Disease is my standout track on this one. I, though, am dying to know what you thought about this one, John. Man, I gave it the headphones listen. I did not give it the long drive listen. Maybe I should have. I had some trouble getting into this one, man. Ball bearer and drive. I do. I might need to. I didn't think this one was bad. I just don't know if it's really my type of metal or even what I really knew doom metal would be classified as. You know, I'm very Goldilocks when it comes to like my taste in metal, not too heavy, not too soft. This is just like a little bit softer than I wanted more often than not for what I was expecting, I suppose. Don't know if that's fair or not, but I did appreciate their songwriting and musicianship. There's moments on here, like the back half of the title track, where I think it blossoms into something really beautiful and something I can vibe with. But there just wasn't enough of those moments for me personally. Like I said, not a bad album, though. Just not for me. Probably in the five range if I'm factoring in personal taste. A little higher if I'm not. My standout is the title track, though. I think that is a work of art for sure. Nice, nice. Well, I'm glad you I'm glad you gave it the old college try here, John. Of course, man. I'm always going to. I um, I'm still will. reeling from extortionist through this one, maybe. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about this new one from Bootlicker, Thousand Yard Stare, man. You know, there's few things better than a crunchy punk album like this on the playlist. Tracks that bleed together, energy that never stops, lyrics are easy to memorize, and most importantly, it's fun. I am lazy as shit, and this album makes me want to get up and run in circles until I pass out. You throw Mercy Dog or Cannon Fodder on next to a person in a coma, I'm pretty sure they're going to wake up looking to circle pit. This is this <laughs> is just a good album, man. Easy seven. My standout is Mercy Dog. Thank you for throwing this one on this week. I needed You're it. You're welcome, man. Oh, dude. You know, man, I, I, I don't even know how to review this one. The production is terrible. The lyrics are fucking great. The music as a whole is awesome. We got real discharge and other, you know, UK 82 bands energy here. And I just could not stop listening to this one this week, man. Well, it's a massive difference from the Paul Bearer album. This was a welcome dose of fuck you coming after the that emotional yeah. record from Paul Bearer. Uh, yeah, easy seven to eight, man. The whole thing, the whole thing's a standout, bro. It's 16 fucking minutes long. What do you, what do you want? <laughs> Nothing more. That was all I needed. All right, man. Talk to me about this next one. Beating the drums of ancestral force. I do not know how to say the artist's name. I am sorry. A Zumpantli is a Zumpantli. Mesoamerican term for a rack of human skulls that is normally arranged along a wall. These skulls are typically made up of sacrificial skulls or enemies' skulls. Figured I'd throw that out there because I knew this word had to fucking mean something. Um, <laughs> what else can I say about this album other than it absolutely Bucks. It is death metal done in a doomy way with some of the most interesting drum choices for either of those genres that I've heard in like a long time. I assume that's like the indigenous portion of this album. 
this whole thing is just fucking feral though with riffs going from like heavy heavy picking to slow and crushing on and then right back into heavy picking on a whim from the tribal drums coupled with double bass grooves from the simplicity of the rips riffs to the straight up evilness of the vocals I fucking love this album, John. I listened to it quite a bit this week, and I will likely continue to listen to it throughout the year. It's got some of the best album artwork of the year, in my opinion, as well. Uh, you love a good red metal album yeah. artwork, right? Uh, of my, course. Uh, it's, an eight, it's an 8 out of 10 for me, for sure. Uh, standout is the two-track punch of Tlalk Lukik into Chichimactal. Uh, it's fucking insane. That. I'm going to try them all. I'm going to try them all. Yeah, man. I mean, I couldn't pronounce the artist's name before just now. I can't pronounce any of these song titles, but it is one of the heaviest albums I've heard all year. And that's in a year that includes new releases from Knocked Loose, Carnifex, or a, I'm sorry, Job for a Cowboy and Orbital Gate. I think that means something. I, I don't enjoy this album quite as much as those ones, but it does feel like a singular work of art in the same way. Even though it's a little heavier than I typically like my metal, it's not impossible. It's it is impossible to not be impressed with just how fucking soul crushing this album is, dude. I, I, it's probably like a six for me. My standout is the second track. No idea how to pronounce it, but it's great. Lyo Huali. Love that. Yep, that's it. <laughs> yeah, hey, I'm glad you liked it, man. This was this was a really fun listen. Yeah, a lot of fun metal to cap this week off, man. All right. That does it for this week's podcast. Join us again next week. We're going to be breaking down new albums from Vince Staples, Bring Me the Horizon, 21 Pilots, Dive, Vintage Culture. I think there's new releases from like Say Anything and Kiza dropping tonight. Uh, it's going to be a good time. Make sure to tune in. Follow along with our socials. You can find us on Instagram and Reddit. Just search Brandon's Face Pod. Give us a follow if you're not already. And make sure to follow along with the playlist that the podcast is based on. It'll be updated every Friday. You can find the link to that in the show notes below. We'll see you all next time. Peace. Peace.